All right, next we have the Justice Cross LP, which is lovingly referred to as Cross. Um, and your cut on here is Phantom Part 2. Yeah. And w and you you also like the Soul Wax remix, you told me. Yeah. But tell us. Let's, so, let's I mean, this era, this era is, is very dear to me. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of this music, now we call it Blog House, because yes. it's electronic music that thrived on Blog. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, for, for, for a lot of reasons, this these were formative years for me even though i was sort of like at the 10 year mark of my career right. as a dj but this is when i started coming into my sound as a producer and this you know this era laid the groundwork for a lot for the music that i started making or signing or championing or whatever mm -hmm. and um the way that all these records were just spreading on blogs and and there's so much cross-pollination um after years of like segmented genres, for me that was incredibly inspiring and exciting. Um, so, this is when I really got into electronic music, right? right? right. Okay. So I mentioned right. like maybe I, uh, something like a Daft Punk record would have grabbed my ears in the '90s, but it's in the mid 2000s that I found records that I fully embraced and I started playing entire sets right. of this sound. Right, right. You know, I remember the first time I played a set that didn't include a rap record, where I was like, right. "Oh, I just did a whole set without a rap record." It's <laughs> a proud a moment, rap. right? Well, it's just like, yeah. wow, this is a, this is a change, yeah. right. and it happened so progressively. Um, but I think a lot of what I like about the records that came out around this time, whether it be Justice or Soul Wax or whoever else, was that there was, in all these different countries and these different sort of sub-scenes, there was people who didn't have a background in electronic music who st were starting to make electronic music. Right. But they brought baggage with them, right? right? So Soul Wax were a sort of Belgian but Britpop band, yeah. a rock band. And then when they made electronic records it was with that approach and their instruments you know similarly in the uk like simeon mobile disco they had that big record yeah. hustler yeah simeon was a rock oh, band mm -hmm. yeah, yeah they're yeah. a rock band that just knew about electronic culture because everyone in the uk takes drugs and goes to raves <laughs> so th this is th like that was them dabbling into techno this is you know th the two justice guys were literally graphic designers they were just like aesthetic guys yeah, there yeah, were yeah. two dudes who had excellent taste and who basically who mainly loved rock music right. who decided to make electronic music and figured out how to distort shit on cubase and whatever else <laughs> right. and but it sounds so different and like at it's such a weird at intersection that time it was completely it, it yeah. was yeah unlike anything else so they brought the energy and the grit of rock and roll mm -hmm. into electronic music and that's what made me love these records was that i wasn't uh, dance music fan per se you know for starters but if but I loved rock like I grew up on Zeppelin before yeah, even right. getting into hip hop yep. so if someone makes rock and roll riffs with banging drums <laughs> and it's distorted Sold, and, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's got like chopped like they chopped the sample yeah. on this This they sampled Goblin the like Italian soundtrack yeah. music okay. so if you're chopping records chopping samples that appeals to my primo ear right. and then you're distorting rock and roll riffs that it speaks to like 11 year old me right, that right. was listening to, to rock now did you do you think you got into this genre more because you were traveling around the world and you and you yeah, had more prob access to it yeah okay yeah and i was starting to f find a few blogs where i would download stuff yeah. but then i would go to france i remember one specific trip before ed banger really got popular in north america i went to paris for a show in like 2000 five or six and that's sure i think five maybe and my boy was like yo there's you know this label ed banger they're doing cool stuff and um you know busy pete was our, was familiar with like, yeah yeah DMC yeah c work or right whatever. so you know it was easy for me to just pop into the office and say what's up and they're like oh hey track yo right used right to watch your dmc tapes and i'd be like yo play me this music you're making this <laughs> right. is cool shit and i remember they they burned me a cd most of the songs were unmastered so the levels were mad low but i brought home a cd that was like hand you know the handwritten my name on it with a sharpie that was like that was my little gold mine yeah, yeah. like a year before north american dj's really got hip to this sound yeah. Yeah. and i started doing mashups with it and experimenting yeah. with it Ooh, you just reminded me of 30 south, 30 south dance. dance yeah that, that, that was, was so manifesto. good man that was <laughs> man that was good Thanks, man. that was yeah Thanks. we're very ahead of its time so a track did a those of you that don't know a track did kind of a remix album using yeah. all electronic samples and yeah. hip-hop vocals and and then gucci main and swiss beats sampled this record for it's gucci time yeah yeah so i mean you were ahead of the game on that because yeah. you were using I mean, gucci a lot, yeah a lot yeah, vocals sure, on, sure. on that shit yeah the dirty south dance thing for me i'll tell you it was um my mindset 
was there was all these electro records that I loved and I wanted to play in my sets, but it still felt so like like a like a leap. It felt a little risky to play right. full on electro right. in a set because I was such from the exactly yeah, coming right, from right, a hip hop right, standpoint yeah. that my way to like build a bridge was to make mashups and right, put rap vocals right, yeah. over stuff that right. made it like more accessible like a, or easy to safer. digest for yeah, the average person it, an it anchored right, it right. into my background yeah. so at first i was making two three four uh mashups just for me to drop into my sets yeah so that it was it, it, it had a connective Expl tissue yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and then once i had a couple of ones that led to me making a whole mixtape of it so it was an interesting project because i had to produce each mashup individually mm -hmm, yeah. and then mix it and this was a few months before i started fool's gold as i was starting to produce kid sister and things like that and doing more up-tempo work and right. it really felt like a sort of mission uh uh mission statement yeah where it's like this is like here's the sound that i'm going to be messing with right. for the next couple of years love it we yeah. were doing the same thing within, within humans, humans. Yeah. yeah and, and it's the shit. same kind of stuff we were in a clubs we like this we need to bridge it exactly. right you know exactly. what are we gonna do what's the connective tissue? this will be perfect it will yeah. do this shout yeah. out exactly. shout out dave fogg yeah uh -huh. the overlord of the inhumans and now he's still around the music yeah. director at dre's <laughs>